Did you know that if you pass your driving test in Great Britain in an automatic car and get an automatic only driving license, according to Admiral, the insurer, you're gonna be paying on average 43.89% more for your car insurance. That's nearly 44%, that's huge. Now you may be thinking, well, automatic cars are more expensive to buy, therefore they're going to be more expensive to insure because if you were to write one off, the claim is likely going to be bigger. And you're right, to an extent. According to Admiral, if you're a manual driving license holder and insure yourself on an automatic car, on average, you're going to be paying around about 5% extra than if you were to insure yourself on the manual equivalent of that car. So what's going on? Well, according to Admiral, again, automatic only driving license holders have a higher frequency of claims than manual driving license holders. In fact, automatic only license holders have 19.23% more claims than those with a manual driving license. Facts are facts and figures are figures and no one's contesting them here. Where you may have an opinion is the reason. Why is it that automatic only driving license holders make more claims than manual driving license holders? Well, that's a harder question to answer, but I have been a driving instructor for 15 years, over 15 years now, and although I mostly teach in manual, I have given automatic driving lessons as well. And in my experience, the person who passes their driving test in a manual is a different driver than the person who passes their driving test in an automatic. And I think that difference is a difference in the number of claims, but more on that one later. Firstly, I'm going to get some prices. We have Jamie James, he's 17 years old, male, just passed his driving test, lives in Romford, Greater London, uses his car for social, domestic and pleasure, including commuting. He's a student living at home, he's got a part-time job as a waiter in a restaurant and he's planning to cover around about 5,000 miles a year in his car. He's willing to put 250 pounds towards a voluntary excess the excess is how much he would have to contribute towards a claim if he was to make one. And he doesn't mind what level of cover he has, third party only, fully comp. He just wants to be able to afford his car, which is a 2009 Toyota Igo with a one litre engine that produces six, uh, 67, I was gonna say six, 607, <laughs> no, not 607, not from that, 67 brake horsepower, manual, and it's worth about two and a half thousand pounds. If you don't know much about horsepower, 60 is about your minimum for a car. A hundred is really what you need for the car to be easy to drive and keep up with traffic, 70 miles an hour uphill, no problem. And 200 horsepower is pretty quick. Unless the car is huge and heavy, then it won't be. Don't go by the engine size these days. Engine size has been mostly irrelevant for a long time because you can get little engines with lots of power and big engines with very little power. It's power that really counts for how powerful the car is, not the engine size. So insurance quotes from confused.com, the cheapest that came up, fully comp, £3,948. And I was thinking, it can't get much more expensive than that. And the total excess is 640 pounds because his voluntary excess is 250 pounds, but usually there is a compulsory excess on top of that. If you're interested, third party only and third party fire and theft was 600 pound more, so fully comp was cheaper. Now, let's make that car automatic. It's now worth about 4,000 pounds because small automatic cars are usually more money than small manual cars but it's exactly the same car, it's the same color, it's almost the same mileage, but it's automatic. Multi-mode is what they call the automatic of the iGo back then. Fully comp. <laughs> Hold on, 6,003 pounds. It's nearly 2,000 pounds more. And to add insult to injury, the compulsory excess has gone up. So his total excess is now 725 pounds, despite his voluntary excess staying the same at 250 pounds. If you're interested, third party fire and theft 
It's 5,582 pounds and third party only, which is the minimum level of cover you need to drive on the roads in Great Britain is 6,164. So third party only is the most expensive um, cover which doesn't make sense, does it? But I found that to be the case quite often, even when I was doing quotes, when I was young. Now let's give it an automatic, an automatic license with that same automatic car and see what happens to the price. Confused.com finds a price at 6,351 pounds. So it's gone up by 350-ish pounds for him having an automatic only license. Third party fire and theft is 6,414 and third party only is 7,084. So again, fully comp is actually the cheapest level of cover, even though it's the most comprehensive level of cover. Now, what about saving some money on his insurance? There is actually a way you can do this. There's quite a few ways and I'm thinking of making a video about how to save money on your insurance. What you can do is add an older person to your policy. Now don't do this. Don't put the older person as the main policy holder, the main driver and add you to the policy when actually you are the main driver because that is insurance fraud. It's illegal, it's known as fronting. But what you can do is add someone to your policy as a named driver. It's not illegal and it's just helpful. If this, like, let's say you put your mum on the insurance. That's only gonna add convenience. Your mum can now drive your car with your insurance. If it's fully comp, she's got fully comp. But it's gonna bring down the price. Look at this. Jennifer James, 45 years old, the mother of Jamie James, married. She's a chartered accountant and she's held a license, a manual driving license for over 25 years. Putting her on the policy as a name driver. So Jamie's still the main driver. He's still gonna build up his no claims bonus as well. £4,369, and £2,500 cheaper than not having his mum on the policy. Third party fire and theft, £5,552, and third party only, £6,132. So again, fully comp is the cheapest level of cover. I don't know how 17 year olds are paying four, five, or £6,000 for their car insurance. So later on in the video, I'm going to see how cheap of a quote I can get Jamie. It won't necessarily be the same car, but it will be worth less than £3,000. And it's going to be manual because I know I can get a manual policy a lot cheaper. But firstly, I'm going to show you why I believe, based on my experience as a driving instructor, people who pass their driving test in an automatic and have an automatic only driving license are more likely to claim on their insurance. And it's to do with forward planning. When you learn to drive a manual car, you are forced to plan ahead. You can't react to situations because you don't have time to. So when you're driving, you're looking out for signs and road markings and you're thinking, I need to prepare the car before I get there. For example, I have a roundabout sign on the left and I wanna go ahead towards other routes, which is the second exit. So I'm thinking, how fast should I be going and what gear do I need before I get there? So I'm slowing down and I'm thinking second gear is going to be appropriate because it looks like I'm going to have a reasonable view. So I'm preparing the car, I'm getting second gear, finding the clutch bite point, letting the revs match gently. And now I'm thinking, should I go? Looks like I can go. So I'm continuing. I'm ready to both go and stop. Learning the manual has forced me to do that. At this next roundabout, let's say I'm driving an automatic. I could maybe drive more like this. It's driving along, there's a roundabout here. Okay, I'm gonna slow down and now I'm gonna decide, is it safe to go? Yes, it is, let's go. Oh, crikey, I'm in the junction, need to prepare the car, of course. If you're in an automatic, you get away with that. You didn't have to prepare the car. You didn't have to be a step ahead of yourself. That's not acceptable in a manual. Doing that in a manual is not good. That's not gonna get you your driving license if you're driving into the roundabout in the wrong gear and having to change. So learning a manual forces you to plan ahead. It forces you to be one step ahead of yourself and always ready for the hazard you're about to meet. And if you're one step ahead, then you're less likely to get yourself into trouble. When I'm teaching manual, a big part of the training is forward planning, preparing the car 
before my pupil reaches the hazard or the junction. If they don't prepare, then it's unlikely they will succeed. They'll get to the hazard or junction, think, oh, look, I can go. Then they'll try and prepare the car afterwards, meaning they're rushing because, well, they need to go now and they're not ready, meaning they're more likely to mess the gears up and stall in the middle of the junction or just feel stressed and it feels like a faff. They don't get away without forward planning when they're learning manual, but when they're learning automatic, they can get to the junction, slow down late, react to it, look, oh, it's clear, get on the gas and go, no problems. The instructor may be encouraging them to forward plan, but they're not forced to. Therefore, they're more likely to pass the driving test with lower planning skills, and therefore, in my opinion, more likely to claim on their insurance. And another reason why automatic only driving license holders are responsible for approximately 20% more insurance claims in Great Britain than manual driving license holders. And this is me generalizing a population. I'm not talking about individuals. Individuals have their own reasons, but me generalizing from experience of teaching many people to drive, usually people who are learning manual are a bit more confident and more willing to put time into learning the skill of driving. Whereas someone who's chosen automatic, usually as a general rule, but not necessarily the case, is less confident and less willing to put in time to learn how to drive and want to learn in as few lessons as possible. So which one do you think is more likely to make an insurance claim? That may explain, or at least partly explain, the statistics. I'm sure there's other reasons why automatic only driving license holders are responsible for more insurance claims than manual license holders. Why don't you let me know your thoughts in the comments? But in Great Britain, things are gradually changing. Every year, a slightly higher percentage of the population chooses to learn in an automatic, but the vast majority of people learning to drive are still learning manual, and for good reason. And that's the cost of owning an automatic car. If you're looking at 30,000 pound cars, the cost difference between manual and automatic isn't that great. But if your budget is less than 4,000 pounds and you're looking for a cheap to run first car, the price difference is great. You can get a younger, lower mileage manual car for the same money that buys you an automatic car, which will be older with higher miles. You just get better value for money. Also, it costs more to insure a car if you have an automatic only driving license. So I think well into the 2030s, more than 50% of learner drivers will still be opting for the manual transmission. I've tried to find Jamie the cheapest possible quote. I chose 10 cars, all worth less than 3,000 pounds. Not all of them were your typical first car. I chose a Toyota Avensis as well to see if that would be cheaper because sometimes choosing a car that older people generally drive can be cheaper, but on this occasion, it wasn't. The cheapest car happened to be the first car I chose the iGo. Um, in second place was a Citroen C1, but of course, if you know much about cars, that is basically an iGo, and they were very close on price. I played about with the mileage, more miles, less miles per year. Actually, 5,000 miles a year was optimum for a lower price quote. And I included commuting or took away commuting to see if that made much difference, and it didn't. I added his dad to the policy as well as his mum, and that brought it down quite a bit. In fact, the cheapest price I got with his dad and his mum on the policy was £3,426 for a manual Toyota iGo with 67 brake horsepower and a manual license, of course. Three years ago, I bought a brand new car and over three years, I lost £11,000, which works out to be around about £3,500 a year in depreciation. So this insurance premium is the equivalent to one of those years of depreciation on a brand new car. So I definitely feel for new drivers at the moment and I don't know how they're affording insurance. I thought, how can I get around this? Maybe a classic car, because in my experience, classic cars are often quite cheap to insure. But try finding a good quality classic car for £3,000 or less. That just wasn't happening. Oh, I also decided to relocate him. I thought, what if he lives somewhere remote? Where have I been that's remote? And I thought, Isla oh, Skye, that's a beautiful place in Britain. 
that brought down the price to £1,951. So it goes to show where you live does make a big difference to how much your insurance premium is going to be. But it's not exactly practical to relocate yourself across the country just to be able to afford your car insurance. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. The purpose in this video is to find out, does it cost more to insure your car if you learn in an automatic and have an automatic only license? Apparently it's over 40% more, but the quotes I did, it wasn't that much more, but it was still more. The cheapest price I could find as an automatic license holder with an automatic car, with mum and dad on the policy, was just over £4,000. Whereas the cheapest price I could find with mum and dad on the policy again, um, for a manual car with a manual license was under three and a half thousand pounds, about six to seven hundred pounds difference there. So quite a lot. And the car, the automatic car was one thousand five hundred pounds more to buy. So learning in an automatic is probably going to be a bit more expensive than you first thought. Well, I hope this video clears things up and helps you make the best decision for you as to whether or not you choose to learn in a manual or an automatic. The cost of the lessons and how many lessons you're gonna do is only one part in the total cost of getting on the road as a new driver. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, more car insurance now, check out the links to Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, then Collingwood are there for you because you can insure yourself on their car without affecting their policy. And that takes away a big stress from the owner of that car that you're using to practice your driving in. Via the link at the moment, that's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, I recommend checking out the link to confuse.com because you fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from many insurers to compare who's cheapest. And you can change things in that quote, including the car, to try and optimize it and find the best price, which is exactly what I've been doing throughout this video. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.